All right, I definitely see evidence of stripeability, and this is centipede. This is a good patch of centipede. I can definitely see it. I got the sun is behind me, and I can see a light stripe and a dark stripe, and I can see a light stripe and a dark stripe and a light and a dark. This is with no lawn striper, and I am definitely seeing evidence. So, looks to me preliminarily that if we had thick centipede, we could definitely get a good stripe. And I'll tell you what, this centipede is really impressing me. It's really pretty grass. Okay. All right, uh, there you are. All right, so we had fun playing around with that beautiful Toro personal pace, self-propelled, awesome lawnmower. You guys know I'm in love with that thing. Doug, you like it too, right? I, I mean, love it. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. So My that- John Deere is jealous. Your John Deere is jealous. <laughs> what we're doing now is we wanna continue with our plan that we had, and that was we were gonna continue with putting lime down. Uh, we're gonna get, this time I got dolomite lime, so we're gonna get some calcium and magnesium, which is nice. We wanna continue, you know, messing with the pH. We'll retest it in a while. Uh, and then we're also gonna put down a, a half rate of melorganite. We got a lot of nitrogen here already, but I wanna get some melorganite in just to give us some slow release to push us, keep pushing us through the spring and into May here when we're gonna start getting rains because, so it's, this part of the country is very much like Florida, right? It'll rain like almost every day because we're coastal. Yeah, so in the summer. Yeah, 5 o'clock, we usually get a quick rainfall in the summertime every day. Yep. It hasn't started yet, but. Yeah, and so we've been the same way in Florida. We've been like extremely dry. I mean, you probably get some rain here. We've been real dry, but we will get rain every day. So with that, I want some slow release nitrogen in here just to keep us moving that way. Uh, and again, the color here is beautiful. It looks so good after you cut it. I mean, it, it's just amazing what just a fresh cut will do for any lawn. Okay, real quick summary, here's where we're at. Remember the soil test we had? Yeah, we need to bring the pH up, so we're gonna use a little bit of lime. Now, I had to get a different kind of lime in the last application that we did in the fall. Link in the description below to that video. This time, I was able to get dolomite lime, and I wanted that because it's pelletized and much easier to put down. And secondly, because it's gonna give me some calcium and magnesium that are macronutrients that I am lacking in. Just really pretty, but I mean, the color here is gorgeous. Now we just gotta get to keep thickening up. So with that, Let's start with that lime. So, get our setting. We'll dial it back just a little bit, see where it ends up. Doesn't that look a lot better than that white powdery? <laughs> right? Remember that one from last year? Yeah, so getting dolomite lime, you're gonna get the calcium and magnesium, but by the way, I don't recommend you all touch it. It'll dry your hands out, it's caustic, but Either way, this is much easier to spread now because it's also in a pelletized form. So should be a little bit easier of a task. Should I put two bags? Uh, it's up to you. You're strong, so yeah, you can. It's just going to be more on the more in the hopper, more for you to push. I guess I should do some calculations for everybody. So we got 40 pounds. We said the lawn was 9,000. Roughly. So we'll call it 10,000 to make my math easy. We're going to go down. These are 40 pounds. We got three of them. So we are going to put down 12 pounds per thousand. So that right there should get a good most of the front and into the side. Or those two there should get almost the whole front and down around the side and then that'll be in the back. Here we go. Because it's lime, we don't have to worry about, you know, trim passes and stuff like that. We just want to get a nice even coating down. There we go. Let me see. Let's uh we can dial it up now. We can take it up higher than that. Go to the next one. There you go. That should work. Oh, you have plenty left there, too. Yeah, I was thinking. do one more pass out here? That's what I was thinking. All right, let's dial it down. So calcium and magnesium are both macronutrients. They're not ones that we typically worry about so much, but if we do need lime, we're gonna mess with our pH, then we might as well use the dolomite lime to get the calcium and the magnesium. Plus, for some reason, I really like the smell of dolomite lime. Do you like the smell of that? Is it different? Yeah. I don't know, I like the smell of it. Yeah, it's, I like it 
It smells like key lime. What is it? It's like summer. It does smell like summer, doesn't it? Yeah, all right, hold on. Doug doesn't know what the circle dance is. He's gonna know, so what do you got left? Oh yeah, Lots. see? a Little bit left. So how would you, being just a man that's been fertilizing and you have that little bit left and you don't really know what you're gonna do with it, how are you gonna get rid of it? Go ahead. I'm just gonna sprint from one corner to the other till it's good. All right, this is Doug's version of the circle dance. Do it. Do the bumps and everything, yeah. <laughs> it's all gone? No. Keep going. You're gonna go around in circles. There you go. Hoorah! There it is. Oh, 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 It's gone. No. Oh, there. Oh, more. Yeah, there we go. That. There we go. See, now you're taking your partner up and swinging her around. Throw her down. All right, next up, our old buddy Milo. And so again, we're at a 540, so 5% 5 nitrogen. We're gonna put this down at like 10 pounds per thousand. It's just gonna give us a nice, you know, kind of half rate. We've got three bags here, so roughly uh, 35 times three, 105 pounds. So, you know, just a nice little even coat here to get just under half pound in for everywhere. Nice slow release nitrogen. You're definitely gonna dial this one back. Vast capacity right there. That is a ma it's two full bags of malorganite in there. Doug likes to do it the hard way, so here we go. <laughs> there you go, side spread control set. You just go right along the edge as close as you can get. Is it coming out? Yeah, it's coming out. Yeah, let's turn it up. So I see you're adjusting. So what are you doing? Are you visualizing like I talked about? Yeah, it just didn't seem like much was coming out and, um, you know, just turned it up a little bit. Yeah, you know, so... This two bags we have in the hopper right now has got to cover just about the entire fenced-in part. Um, right. I want to see it drop a little bit. Yeah, so you, can, so you can do it by feel. You can understand how fast this is going down. You can see how much is coming out and then you can visualize your area and your square footage and it's and you can just you you use your senses to realize it's coming out a little too fast or not fast enough right knowing that you got the right amount and the coverage area and i used to visualize it it's i don't know he gets it and i'm hoping you guys get it too it's we we're talking about because doug's a race car driver right so so that's how you run your car right by feel you might know what your adjustments are but if it doesn't feel right it just doesn't feel right, right. so you adjust to what feels good on the track that day this is your track. Oh, that was good. <laughs> All right, go for it. I'll shut up. So we are doing our trim pass here. I should say I'm not doing the trim pass. Doug is doing the trim pass. Good walking speed, putting some ass into it. Double fast walk, there it is. Keep you going. I can also tell you've done this a few times. You all might, you have your own pattern down. Yeah. See, so you learn how your wheel spacing, you don't even have to think about it after you do it a few times. This is a professional spreader, so it's got a good five feet each side. Probably more than most of what you guys will get out of yours. So now what we're gonna do, because again, we went this way, now what we're going to do is go this way, and that way we avoid striping, we, it just keeps everything nice and even. This is a good way to do it, you know, instead of trying to cover everything in one pass. We mentioned this in a video before, I'll link to it, but go this way and then go that way. So that's what we're going to do now. No need to do another trim pass though, we'll just throw it right up to it. Learning from the master. Look at him. He's in his own world. He thinks he's in heaven right now. <laughs> that thing spreads so wide you can almost do the whole back in like one pass. 
Okay, our last task is to spot spray weeds. We're gonna use Image with Atrazine, which is just an over-the-counter weed, con weed control concentrate. I tell you guys, you don't always have to have designer weed controls. Sometimes just this stuff over-the-counter will work. Again, we've got some other problems here that we're gonna have to address later on. I'm gonna bring in probably, I don't know, probably some Celsius maybe. I don't know, we'll see what I'm gonna bring in here, but for right now, this is gonna work just fine to kill a majority of some of the weeds that the bonus S didn't get, we'll get them with this. And then it'll also leave a little extra that Doug can keep as long as you keep it in a dry place, really out of the, not dry, it's wet. <laughs> as long as you keep it out of the sunlight, it'll last a couple weeks and you can just spot spray whenever needed. Good agitation. So what we're gonna do, again, we have a big expanse here. I don't have any marking blue. So the best way to do this is we're just gonna walk a grid. We're gonna go up and back and up and back and monitor. Uh, again, should be using marking blue. I didn't bring any today. So again, we'll just keep that grid going back and forth. And remember, when you're spraying weeds, we're using the fan tip nozzle. We wanna spray the weeds until they are wet. All right, so we're done working. Give me an update on race weekend, this weekend, right? Yep. All right, tell me the story about the bird nest. Uh, well, I have to keep a towel over the, the cowl where the air intake is. My air filter is inside here. So my car has to live in the garage like this. And what happens if it doesn't? Well, in about an hour, and you could sit here and drink a beer and watch it. You can literally watch it happen. The birds will come in and they'll just carry stuff in their beak and fill it up and make their nest. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's ongoing. Speaking of birds, let's go check out Bruce. Yeah, let's, let's see how he's see. doing. There he is. Hi, Bruce. Oh, yeah, yeah stand up, boy. <laughs> what's up, big, how big boy? He is. Yeah, what's up, bro? <laughs> Hi, Bruce. You want to come out? At least two weeks. Because he is. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> Say hi, Bruce. We got him. What's up, dude? Yeah. Looks pretty grumpy. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Are you grumpy? So she has been laying on eggs for two or three weeks. She thinks she huh. has babies. Oh, she doesn't realize, huh? Yeah, she wants babies bad, so she's gonna lay here until they come. Aww. <laughs> she wants to be a mama. How long will she do that for, do you think? Um. So you check, right? You make sure you get the eggs out? I get them out, yeah, yeah. because, I mean, whether the eggs are fertilized or not, she doesn't know. She's gonna sit on them either way, but we right. do have two roosters, so there is a possibility that our eggs could be fertilized. All right, y'all, that's everything. Hope you learned a lot in this video. Hopefully it's been helpful to you. Again, we're gonna update this probably again in another four to five weeks or so, and then you guys will see us continuing to work on this lawn here in Bluffton, South Carolina. With that, I'm Alan, and this is Doug, and we will see you in the lawn. Pretty good. Hope I didn't cut your head.